This episode of Tech News Day is sponsored by Caviar and by Feels. We've been going on and on about this for years, and you're probably tired of hearing about it, but it bears repeating. Facebook is basically brain poison, and it has disproportionately infected the brains of the very generation who once told our generation not to believe just any old thing we read on the internet. Isn't it ironic? Yes. A little too ironic. Uh, Facebook, in addition to being the largest data mining operation ever, is also a fertile petri dish for pseudoscience and conspiracy theories to spread like wildfire from the darkest, most niche corners of the internet right into the mainstream discourse. And these are problems inherent to all social media, but Facebook stands head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to making people literally lose their damn minds in a rabbit hole of misinformation. So it was surprisingly refreshing last Friday when President Joe Biden was asked what his message to platforms like Facebook was regarding misinformation about COVID-19. His response was, they're killing people. I mean, yeah. Nothing but respect for my president. I, I, look, he's not really uh, saying things that I want to hear too often. So this is one of those things where I'm like, you really nailed it with this one. Yeah, not bad, sir. Yeah. So no lies detected there. Great to hear it from someone his age and in his position. Mm -hmm. um, his full response was actually, they're killing people. I mean, they're really, look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated and they're killing people, which, uh, yeah, look, not exactly true, sir. The first part was great. You should have just stopped there. Uh, it is true that the pandemic is currently very disproportionately affecting the unvaccinated, especially when it comes to hospitalization and death. But saying the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated is exactly the kind of inaccurate statement that Facebook anti-vaxxers are going to jump all over to support their idiocy. Literally, staffers at the White House who got vaccinated are testing positive. But hey, I mean, whatever, Mr. President, uh, we all we all make mistakes. Just try not to do it again. And he did it again. Uh, <laughs> like I said, this guy, he doesn't really have a good uh, average when it comes yeah. to saying things out loud. So, yeah, at a town hall on Wednesday, Biden said, quote, you're not going to get covid if you have these vaccinations. Come, Come on, on, man. <laughs> I mean, uh, I got hairy legs. In fairness, earlier in the town hall, he did manage to get it slightly less wrong when he said, quote, if you're vaccinated, you're not going to be hospitalized. You're not going to be in an ICU unit and you're not going to die. But sorry, Joe, still wrong. Uh -huh. I mean, all those things can still happen. It's exceedingly rare. But those outlier cases are a big excuse that the Facebook COVID anti-vax community has for continuing to distrust these vaccines and not get them. So lying about the vaccine granting full immunity is not helpful. Yeah, I mean, the past, like, we, two, three weeks or so, uh, in every comment section, even, I obviously don't have Facebook, I can't imagine what it's like there, but I see a lot of discourse on, like, Instagram and uh, Reddit and stuff like that, and it sucks. There's, and it's, it's kind of like just the same arguments, and you can kind of, like, put people into groups of the same arguments. Yeah. Uh, over and over and over again. It's a lot of anti-vaxxers laughing at the vaccinated for getting po like tested positive. Yeah. When in a majority of cases... A vast majority. A vast majority of cases, uh, especially here in L.A., where a lot of companies and film sets and production houses test people like every other day. So it's like, yeah, okay, people are testing positive. They may have no symptoms. They may have light symptoms. It's great that they found out that they're positive and now they can quarantine, but it's not like the that the hospitalization numbers and deaths are skyrocketing among vac vaccinated people. Yeah. But it is being used online as a huge win for the anti-vax community, regardless of the truth of it all. Yeah, it's very depressing. Yeah. And look, just to be absolutely clear on this, when we say these uh, so-called breakthrough cases of vaccinated people uh, getting serious COVID infections are, are rare, we mean very rare. At this point, 99.5% of COVID deaths that occur and 97% of COVID hospitalizations are among the unvaccinated. That's still over a thousand vaccinated people who have died. But if you're going to point to that as a reason not to get vaccinated, you should probably also factor in the other 200,000 unvaccinated people who died in that same six month period. Also, despite the president's dumb choice of words, Pfizer and Moderna and Johnson & Johnson never said these vaccines were foolproof. 
these breakthrough cases are perfectly in line with the effectiveness percentages that the vaccine makers came up with during clinical testing. Honest and like arguably better. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think J and J and Moderna was like ninety five percent efficacy. And this is before they were like the, the Delta variant existed. There's yeah. Luckily, it actually does have, albeit slightly reduced, but does have uh, efficacy against that. Yeah. So anyway, back to that Facebook and Joe Biden thing. Uh, Joe Biden correctly saying that Facebook is killing people, mm-hmm. not but, just with COVID. Yeah. <laughs> just in general. Just just yeah. All over the world. In all sorts of ways. Mm -hmm. So those comments were seemingly in reference to a recent report that found that just 12 people, the disinformation dozen, are responsible for 65% of all anti-vaccine content circulating on social media and 73% of anti-vax content on Facebook specifically. So, yeah, it's very frustrating that despite seeming like a pretty easy problem to just nip in the bud, that's just 12 buds you got to nip. Uh, It persists. Nevertheless, it persists. Yeah. uh, But uh, look, don't give Joe Biden too much credit for calling it like it is. Because by Monday, after Facebook and its representatives and lobbyists probably loudly denied any responsibility for vaccine skepticism, Biden was already walking his statement back. Wow, we'll cause any trouble here. Here's what he said, though. Facebook isn't killing people. These 12 people are out there giving misinformation. Anyone listening to it is getting hurt by it. It's killing people. It's bad information. My hope is that Facebook, instead of taking it personally that I'm somehow saying Facebook is killing people, that they would do something about the misinformation. Look in the mirror. Think about that misinformation going to your son, your daughter, your relative, someone you love. That's all I'm asking. Come on, man. Come on, man. So, okay, fine. I mean, at least he didn't walk it back all the way. He's still letting Facebook way too much off the hook treating them as sort of just a a passive part of all this by saying, no, Facebook isn't killing people. Just these Facebook users that Facebook continues to allow to spread misinformation all over the platform. Yeah. (laughs) Mark Zuckerberg, as far as we know, isn't out there murdering people as far as we Mm -hmm. know. But it's more like uh, a a, a anthropomorphic giant F that stands for Facebook is watching someone get beat to death and saying, I mean, people are paying to watch this. That's content. (laughs) (laughs) Like, they're just out there carnival barking. Yeah. So in Facebook's defense against the president, they did they did correctly point out that the vast majority of its users seem to be in favor of vaccines. But that lines up perfectly with the fact that 68 percent of U.S. adults have gotten the vaccine. As we've discussed a bunch before, some around 80 percent of the population is going to have to be vaccinated in order to achieve herd immunity, where the virus no longer has enough potential victims to be able to spread effectively. So... It's like, yeah, most people aren't anti-vaxxers. Doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. The fact that the ones that are still there, even though they're a small vocal minority, that's the problem. Yeah. Also, like, you know, make fun of us all you want. And yeah, it it is annoying, but it's fine. It's easy to do. I don't care about wearing a mask indoors. Make fun of LA all you want for reinstating the mask mandate. When you literally look at the lowest vaccination numbers in the entire country, you will see hot spots for hospitalization and death and infection. Like Alabama and Mississippi. Yeah. Like the data is there. Yeah. Their numbers are real low. It's like 40%. Yeah. In the deep South. It's so, it's so aggravating too, especially like in Los Angeles. It's the same two arguments in every comment section, multiple times. It's, I thought the vaccines were supposed to, um, that's it, screw it, I, I'm done with this, blah, blah, blah. And then someone replying, don't you care about children and the immunocompromised? And it's literally those two people, no matter what thousand avatars they're using, it's the same argument being argued every single, all the way yeah, down the thread. It's basically, why should I wear a seatbelt? People who have, who have worn seatbelts have died in car accidents. So there's no reason at all for me to wear a seatbelt. Look, it sucks. It was really nice being normal for like a month. But yeah, it was it's, a nice month. It's also not a big deal. I put my mask back on at Starbucks. I still say hi. They just can't see my beautiful smile. Mm-hmm. But anyways, it's great that two thirds of the country is on board with the vaccine. But without a good chunk of that other third coming to their senses, this shit is it's just not going away. And it's just going to keep mutating. And we're really rolling the dice on whether or not that mutation is going to be better or worse. The Delta variant, which is more than two times as transmissible than the original virus, now makes up the vast majority of new cases. And that increased transmission definitely comes through in the data. Just a month ago, we were averaging around 11,000 new cases per day, the lowest in a year. 
but we're already back on a pretty steep upswing with four times as many new cases per day compared to a month ago. Yeah, that graph is so fucking upsetting. The, back on our bullshit. Let's the, go. The good news that I keep reminding myself about these stupid graphs because it is, it sucks to see this news. There's no way around it. And it bothers me. But I think I keep reminding myself, yes, the infections, they're going back up. Deaths Luckily, are pretty flat. If yeah. you are vaccinated, things are not going to be as bad as they were last year when the numbers were doing the same thing. Yeah, if you're vaccinated and this is stressing you out, I mean... Take a chill pill. You have, uh, you're probably, at this point, you're more likely to get hit by a car. Probably. I don't know. Who I don't have the, the stats in front of me, but that seems true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you'll figure it out. Yeah, well, as long as you're walking around in traffic with your mask on, you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Just not over your eyes. Anyways, yeah, that constant sense of low-level dread about the fate of the human race that you've been feeling for the last year and a half, probably not going away anytime soon. And it sucks. Look, yeah. it's, this news sucks. Sorry. And uh, it's, of course, it's not just COVID. There's also all that freak once-in-a-thousand-years weather, which is clearly the direct result of climate change, just happening constantly these days. We are having uh, weather events that are... The shit that you would read about, like, oh, man, I hope that doesn't happen in my lifetime, yeah. happening four times this week. The, like, in literally the most opposite parts of the world, catastrophic floods have hit every single one. of Like, if you put a pole through the earth, yeah. it's like, hey, you know, this is the farthest you could probably get from each other, right? We're going to have, like, literally a thousand-year flood yeah. right now. Entire towns just swept away. Yeah. So, yeah, in addition to the extreme cold and the extreme heat that we've already seen this year, uh, just the last week has seen truly apocalyptic looking flooding in both Europe and China. A little bit in Arizona as well. Flagstaff? Uh, yeah, fla videos out of Flagstaff is just... Well, there it goes. Yeah, there it goes. Did you see the video uh, of in China of the guy in his car who's just stuck there and the water is just... It's about this high in the windshield and he's just like looking around like, well, I literally am either going to die or survive and there's nothing I can do, so I'll just sit here. Yeah. I mean, lucky for us, we get to see scenes like uh, commuters trapped in subway cars that are flooded up to their necks and quaint little European streets turned into roaring rapids. We get to see it right on our phone. Yeah. It's like we're there. In, in, in 4K. Yeah. Caught in a flood in 4K. Of course, seeing the apocalypse live on the internet as it happens doesn't translate to anything actually being done about it. And here's a great example of why that is. Media Matters ran the numbers and found that broadcast TV morning shows spent nearly as much time on Jeff Bezos' big, stupid, penis-shaped rocket launch in a single day than they spent co uh, covering climate change in all of 2020. 212 minutes covering uh, Bezos' dick rocket uh, and 267 minutes covering climate change in an entire year. But hey, at least some of that 212 minutes included uh, Jeff Bezos' brilliant idea to stop pollution by moving all heavy industry to the moon or space or some shit. Great idea, Jeff. So we're going to have to give Media Matters one and a half Pinocchios on this one. That's uh, one and a half Pinocchios. To be fair, we did have a big pandemic problem last year that where everyone's like, all right, climate change this one time can wait. Yeah, listen, but it was. We need to focus on the immediate apocalypse. I'm gonna have to put the uh, the long term apocalypse on the back burner, but we'll get to you. Oh, what is that? What is that? A penis shaped rocket? Yes. The world's richest man is throwing skittles. What a lovely distraction! Thank wow. you very much, Mr. Bezos. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, at the beginning of the pandemic, we did get a very clear look at what could happen if we decided to stop polluting and being terrible people, because the world for about two weeks was beautiful. Yeah, it was paradise, and we mm -hmm. were like, "That's great," but also. Gonna uh, burn paradise and build a parking lot. <laughs> exactly. Uh, speaking of Bezos, though, and coronavirus, uh, Amazon announced this week that they're gonna go ahead and stop providing free COVID testing at Amazon warehouses at the, at the end of this month. No more tests. And they're doing this on the grounds that they've already got enough other safety measures in place. And uh, if the employees really wanna get tested, they can go do that on their own time. There's plenty of places to do it. On all of that free time that they have. Yeah during their schedules, which provide all sorts of leisure time for getting tested for COVID whenever you want. Instead of picking up their kids or so, making uh, dinner or doing that's, anything else. That's cool. I, gu I guess we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Amazon is, after all, known for putting the safety of its workforce before profits. That's a joke. The complete opposite is true. <laughs> Take back my salute. <laughs> Put my salute <laughs> back in my pocket. Hey, it's holstered, just in case I need it for later in the show. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we got more news coming up. Are you still with us? It's all bad, too. 
Before that, though, this episode is sponsored by Caviar. Hey, we've all been there. It's late. You worked all day and you have no energy to cook. All you want is that perfect burger from the local grill or the homemade pasta dish from your local Italian place. Let Caviar take it from there. Caviar is a food delivery app for people that are into good food. They bring the best local restaurants directly to your doorstep. Other apps might have national chains, but Caviar, they keep it local. Those hidden gems in your neighborhood, they're on Caviar. Caviar curates local options for every taste, whether it's the perfect Reuben from the sandwich shop or the best Indian vegan curry. You always have options for whatever you want. Not sure what you want to eat? Let Caviar's staff picks recommend the best spots in your neighborhood to find your new favorite. And just for our viewers, Caviar is offering $10 off an order of $20 or more. All you have to do is put in the offer code TECHNEWSDAY, all one word, at checkout. That is $10 off a purchase of $20 or more with offer code TECHNEWSDAY. Download the Caviar app and use offer code TECHNEWSDAY. This episode is also sponsored by Feels. CBD isn't about what you feel, it's about what you don't feel. Pain, nervousness, sleeplessness. Existential dread. Yes, if you experience any of these things, Feels CBD is a safe and natural solution without any harmful side effects. Feels is a better way to feel better. Feels is a premium CBD that will help keep your head clear and feeling your best. It's hassle-free, delivered directly to your door. CBD naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. There's no hangover or addiction. We both use feels to make sure we get a good night's sleep and not feel groggy in the morning. And, and for, my for, back. My back. Oh, geez, my back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just place a few drops of feels under your tongue and just feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everyone's dose is different. So feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you can find perfect dose. The feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure that you get the best use of your CBD. Joining the Feels Monthly Membership makes your self-care easy. You'll save money on every order, and you can pause or cancel anytime. Start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash newsday, and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That is F-E-A-L-S dot com slash newsday to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash newsday. Back to the news now with a huge international scandal that dropped this week. The Pegasus Project. Oh, sounds cute. Uh-huh. 17 news outlets from around the world, including The Guardian, The Washington Post, and PBS's Frontline, spent the last several months investigating spyware sold by an Israeli company called NSO Group. And uh, the reports this week show that despite NSO marketing its spyware as a way for clients to track criminals and terrorists, it was used to surveil a whole lot of politicians, journalists, human rights activists, and lawyers. Here's The Guardian. Human rights activists, journalists, and lawyers across the world have been targeted by authoritarian governments using hacking software sold by the Israeli surveillance company NSO Group, according to an investigation into a massive data leak. The investigation by The Guardian and 16 other media organizations suggests widespread and continuing abuse of NSO's hacking spyware Pegasus, which the company insists is only intended for use against criminals and terrorists. Pegasus is a malware that infects iPhones and Android devices to enable operators of the tool to extract messages, photos, and emails, record calls, and secretly activate microphones. The leak contains a list of more than 50,000 phone numbers that, it is believed, have been identified as those of people of interest by clients of NSO since 2016. It continues, Forbidden Stories, a Paris-based nonprofit media organization, and Amnesty International initially had access to the leaked list and shared access with media partners as part of the Pegasus Project, a reporting consortium. The presence of a phone number in the data does not reveal whether a device was infected with Pegasus or subject to an attempted hack. However, the consortium believes the data is indicative of the potential targets NSO's government's clients identified in advance of possible surveillance attempts. Forensics analysts of a small number of phones whose numbers appeared on the leaked list also showed more than half had traces of the Pegasus spyware. Yeah, so that leaked list of phone numbers that were potentially infected includes more than 180 journalists, including employees of major outlets like CNN, The Financial Times, The New York Times, France 24, The Economist, The Associated Press, and Reuters. Uh, it also includes French President Emmanuel Macron and 13 other heads of state and heads of government like the President of South Africa, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, and the King of Morocco. And again, that doesn't mean their phones were infected, but they were on a list believed to include persons of interest for NSO's clients, which the clients are all governments and government agencies, at least according to NSO. Uh, and analysis of the data suggests that NSO's biggest Pegasus clients uh, were in Mexico, the UAE, and Morocco, but all apparent clients also include India, Saudi Arabia, Azerbaijan, Bahrain, Kazakhstan, and Rwanda. 
What's particularly terrifying about Pegasus, though, is just how advanced it is. Normally with spyware, phones are infected through spear phishing, where uh, the victim clicks a malicious link in a text message or an email. This seems to have been how Pegasus originally worked when researchers started looking into it back in 2016. But since then, it's moved on to what is called zero-click attacks, which don't require any interaction from the phone's owner. These attacks exploit zero-day vulnerabilities in apps and mobile operating systems. And one example of this involved simply placing a WhatsApp call to the target that they didn't even have to answer. Once Pegasus is installed, it has root access to the device, allowing attackers to see all the data on the phone, including access to the camera, microphone, and GPS. Yeah, just literally, boop, you're infected. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? And yeah, it doesn't even necessarily stop at just surveillance. Uh, Pegasus targets include the fiancé of Jamal Khashoggi, the, the guy that the Saudis assassinated at an embassy in Turkey when he was applying for a marriage license, and Mexican journalist uh, Cecilio Pineda Birto, who was assassinated just hours after reporting on alleged government corruption. Uh, there's no way of knowing to what extent, if any, Pegasus played in those murders, but it sure is suspicious. Yeah, mm, but uh, but hey, NSO, for their part, they insist that they properly vet all their government clients to ensure that they are not selling their spyware to human rights abusers. And also, it's in the contract that they're only supposed to use it to track criminals. So I don't know what you Otherwise, want to do. Otherwise, that would be illegal. Yeah, that would be illegal. They, I mean, if, if they're breaking the rules of their contract, you should let us know because we will cut them off. I mean, they've already got the spyware. We did sell it to them. So there's really, I mean, yeah, there's not really much we can do, but... Um, Thanks yeah. for making us aware. We told them not to do that. We said only use this uh, extremely advanced spyware for good. Don't use it for evil. So I don't know. I don't know what you want from us. We just made it and sold it. Yeah. For a lot of money. For a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, we'll probably be hearing more news about Pegasus in the coming days and weeks. But as we've seen with stuff like the Panama Papers and Cambridge Analytica, just because all the best investigative journalists on Earth came together to break a massive international scandal doesn't mean jack shit is going to be done about it. Nope. In fact, it'll probably get swept under the rug, and everyone will forget, like everything else. But not after a couple people probably end up dead. Yeah. But let's move on to some more depressing news. God, I am sorry. Remember a few years back when a swatting incident finally got someone killed? Well, it happened again. It happened again. So this latest incident, it actually happened last year, but the details were only recently made public. Uh, here's NBC News. A 60-year-old Tennessee man died after he was swatted by people who wanted him to give up his Twitter handle. The incident happened in April 2020 after the swatter called police to report a fake murder at Mark Herring's Summer County home. Law enforcement swarmed Herring's property with their guns drawn, his family said Thursday. Herring, who was shocked and confused, suffered a massive heart attack and died. Quote, I believe he was scared to death, his daughter, Karina Herring Fitch, said in a phone interview. I believe from the adrenaline and the guns in his face, a heart attack happened. The cops were like, huh, <laughs> that wasn't our fault. We didn't even have to fire a shot. We didn't shot. Even shoot him. And yes, you did hear correctly. This, my, this man, he died over a Twitter handle that the swatter wanted, which is even more petty than the first swatting death, which was over a Call of Duty match. Now here's NBC News again. The family eventually learned that Herring was the victim of a swatting call, and this all stemmed from his Twitter handle, at Tennessee. Fitch said her father picked the handle shortly after the social media platform launched in 2006. He chose it because of his love for his home state. Over the years, Herring received several monetary offers for his handle, but he didn't want to sell it, she said. He never expressed any concerns or fears about being contacted over his Twitter handle. As for the guy responsible, uh, his name is Shane Sonderman, and he's now been sentenced to five years in prison for various charges related not only to this incident, but multiple other harassment campaigns against people whose Twitter handles he wanted. Uh, from that article, Sonderman targeted at least five people across the country, demanding they give up their social media handles, according to an indictment. Herring was the only victim who died. If the person surrendered the handle, Sonderman would then put it up for sale on internet forums, the indictment states. If they refused, Sonderman and his co-conspirator would bombard the owner with repeated phone calls and text messages and harass them in an attempt to get them to change their mind, according to the indictment. Prosecutors said Sonderman and his co-conspirator would find addresses for their target and the target's family members and post the information online. The two would send food deliveries to the homes and would also make swatting calls to police departments in their target's hometown. I don't want to live on this for planet For fucking anymore. handles! Also ironic that the person's name is Sonderman, uh, indicating a very empathetic person who stares at the world and realizes that uh, they are not the main character and that there are millions of little lives happening with their own 
problems and situations and happiness and sadness? Not so much. No, not this guy. Give me the handle. Uh, in other awful news, sexist frat boy culture at companies in the tech and gaming space has, of course, been pretty common for decades. We saw it firsthand. Uh-huh. But a new lawsuit filed against Activision Blizzard by the state of California is still very shocking. Like, you see the headline and you're like, yeah, I could see that happening. And then you read a little bit and you're like, oh, God. Oh, that's why the state of California decided to take up this case. So yeah. let's let's read from Bloomberg Law, who first broke the story. Video game giant Activision Blizzard Incorporated, maker of games including World of Warcraft and Diablo, fosters a frat boy culture in which female employees are subjected to constant sexual harassment, unequal pay, and retaliation, according to a lawsuit filed by the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing. A two-year investigation by the state agency found that the company discriminated against female employees in terms and conditions of employment, including compensation, assignment, promotion, and termination. Company leadership consistently failed to take steps to prevent discrimination, harassment, and retaliation, the agency said. According to the complaint filed Tuesday in the Los Angeles Superior Court, female employees make up around 20% of Activision workforce and are subjected to a pervasive frat boy workplace culture, including cube crawls, in which male employees, quote, drink copious amounts of alcohol as they crawl their way through various cubicles in the office and often engage in inappropriate behavior toward female employees. The agency alleges male employees play video games during the workday while delegating the responsibilities to female employees, engage in sexual banter, and joke openly about rape, among other things. Female employees allege being held back from promotions because of the possibility they might become pregnant, being criticized for leaving to pick their children up from daycare, and being kicked out of lactation rooms so male colleagues could use the room for meetings, the complaint said. Let's do our meeting in the titty milk room. Female employees working for the World of Warcraft team noted that male employees and supervisors would hit on them, make derogatory comments about rape, and otherwise engage in demeaning behavior, the agency alleges. The suit also points to a female Activision employee who took her own life while on a company trip with her male supervisor. The employee had been subjected to intense sexual harassment prior to her death, including having nude photos pass around at a company holiday party, the complaint says. Fuck. And apparently that event, I'm not confirmed, but apparently that event was BlizzCon. That company event. Yeah. Jesus. So, yeah, that's fucking horrible. And uh, in the wake of that news, a lot of past and present employees of Activision Blizzard have shared their stories on social media corroborating the lawsuit's claims. And look, we're, we're sorry, guys. This, this has to be one of our most negative, pessimistic episodes of this show ever. Yeah. It's um, all bad news. Yeah, I mean, we wish the world wasn't such a shitty place, but, I mean, we don't make the news, we just report on it, but uh, we had a couple good weeks there where it wasn't yeah. all depressing. Yeah. Uh, it's turning into a real, went from hot, hot boy summer to, whoa, 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 too hot, too hot, too hot. Too hot. Too hot. Hell. I would like out of this oven. Hell summer. But uh, let's end things on a slightly more positive note. Here's a video from Malaysia showing a steamroller crushing over a thousand Bitcoin mining rigs that were confiscated from Bitcoin miners illegally siphoning millions of dollars of electricity from the grid. Mm. See? Look, there's still good things in the world if you look hard enough. Oh, I, would, I would pay so much money to drive that steamroller, crush those Bitcoin mining rigs. Just in general. I would, like to ride, I would like to ride on a steamroller in any situation. Yeah. Even if it was crushing a comically animated cartoon villain played by Christopher Lloyd. Because <laughs> he dipped that shoe yeah. in that goo. That innocent shoe. And you cannot forgive that. He gave him the dip. Now, I would love to crush stuff with a steamroller. That used to be like a like a whole segment on the Letterman show. Would, like yeah. doing things you thought would be fun when you were a kid, like dropping stuff off a tall building yeah. and crushing stuff. Yeah. When you're a kid, you're super into like heavy equipment. And then that sort of goes away. But like now as an adult, maybe it's because there's like so much construction around where I live. But I'm like, I would like to use that. That's the problem. Though, One day, I'd like to ro operate that machine. First, you're a kid crushing cars, and then you're a full-grown LAPD officer blowing cars off the street with fireworks. Yeah, not cool. <laughs> it's the car-destroying pipeline, and it's real. Yeah. Anyways, oh. that's it for this week's episode of Tech News Day. Uh, if you haven't watched our two previous videos, uh, our, our video covering the, the Jeff Bezos rocket experience. One of my favorite thumbnails I've worked on recently. Yeah, yeah. real... Real fine work. And then uh, weekly weird news about uh, the Tokyo Olympics, which that <laughs> going to be some updates to that one. It just keeps getting worse. Uh, the uh, opening ceremony is tomorrow. So, hey, get excited, everybody. I am actually very excited to see how that goes. Yep. Yeah, should be interesting. Yep. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye.